coming up here on GMA, the latest from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, and all of the South, where 27 reported tornadoes ripped through five states. We've got teams all over from Georgia back here to Mississippi, the latest on the dozens dead and the threat yet today. A lot of tornadoes and more where that came from by the end of the week. I'll be tracking the forecast. On top of that, the American couple missing in Haiti reportedly kidnapped and being held for ransom. We're going to hear from their family and an exclusive with Whitney Houston's family on her new gospel album that they released. That and the singer's legacy. You don't want to miss any of it coming up right here on GMA. Ahead in our next hour at GMSA, a third of San Antonians are pre-diabetic. We'll hear from experts at UT Health San Antonio about why some people in the Alamo City are particularly at risk. And we're shining a spotlight on legendary Olympian Allison Felix, how she's making history off the track. And up next, Ticketmaster going to court as the entertainment giant deals with multiple lawsuits. Why fraud is just one of the many allegations. And traffic could be tricky again this morning due to mist and drizzle that is affecting the roads. We've been tracking that since we went on the air this morning. Stephen Cavazos will have much more coming up in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio. I'm looking around town and I'm saying, I know we can rebuild, but what you do with the devastation? What you do with all the... <laughs> This morning on GMSA, as communities in Mississippi slow to recover from deadly storms this weekend, parts of the Deep South are bracing for more severe weather. The latest on the ground coming up. Back here at home, San Antonio police are working to figure out what triggered a stabbing on the city's south side. What they're saying now about the victim's condition. And taking a live look outside with live cam, we're off to a cloudy start for your Monday morning. Mike's tracking potential for showers and maybe a storm or two in just moments. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hope you had a great weekend, everybody. Good morning. It is 6 a.m. on your Monday. It is March 27th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yes, March 27th. It feels like this month went by very, very fast. Spring break helped with some of that for sure, but uh, the spring weather continues, which can be a little unpredictable around here. Yeah, and uh, it, it just varies from day to day. Basically this week we're going to be doing the ups and downs again, somewhat of a roller coaster. The humidity was low Saturday up yesterday. It's still up this morning, and that's why we've got some of the uh, little bit of mist out there. Looks like the road may be damp over there by 410. Been kind of keeping Keeping an eye on that visibility three miles Pleasanton down to well, it's now up a little bit to three quarters of a mile at Gonzales. Pretty good there at the airport Randolph New Braunfels and then you get on the uh, south and southwest side a little thicker as far as fog is concerned and we've got a lot of fog down along the coastal plain this morning. A couple of uh, spots there around Uvalde, Carrizo Springs as well as Catula. So temperatures just looking at these numbers. No big difference, mid upper 60s, kind of like what we've seen. However, with the dew points, we are looking at some drier air in portions of the hill country, which is going to try and ease its way a little further to the south. Not for long, though, then more humidity later on this afternoon, then a front moves through. More on that coming up. There's that 10% chance for a little bit of a sprinkle, mist, drizzle, whatever you want to call it, some fog out there this morning. We make it up into the mid 70s today at noon, and then we'll top off at 80 later on this afternoon. Not yesterday's 85, thanks to more of the cloud cover out there. Some humidity. Now the front's going to move on through here, then later on this evening, and that may actually touch off one or two strong to potentially severe storms. Storm Prediction Center does have some of our eastern counties under the gun just for an isolated strong to severe storm. High winds, hail being the uh, the biggest threats with that. There will be very few and far between. In behind the front, some cooler air, then it warms back up. Then we got another front. So again, this roller coaster, the spring roller coaster continues this week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, any big problems out there? Yes, Mike. Unfortunately, we're starting our Monday off with some bumps in the road. Let's get a quick look at 37 at US 181. Now, if you have been with us this early in the morning or you're just waking up, the shot looks clear. You don't really see a lot of issues along 37 from this particular shot. In fact, it's at least about a, a nine to 10 miles away from where we have that major incident that's being reported right Right there in the southbound lanes of 37. You can see it as you approach Mathis Road. Uh, right now, nothing has been confirmed. I have sent the Bear County Sheriff's Office an email trying to get a little bit more details around this because that buildup has stayed pretty consistent for a while. But you see that traffic that's moving through the area is moving at just six miles per hour. So not a good situation right now for anyone that's traveling south along 37. Again, I have reached out to BCSO, so let's see if we can find some information for you. Keep you posted throughout the morning. But giving you a wide look at the metropolitan area. 
back here in town, it's been quiet. We did have at least one issue that was reported along I-10 earlier in the morning. That's already cleared out. And all I'm really seeing right now are just some active construction spots and a few stall vehicles. We'll get to that a little bit later on. But if you have to travel to San Antonio this early in the morning from any of these communities, the northbound lanes of 37 shouldn't be too bad from Pleasanton. It's about 28 minutes right now, about 30 minutes along US 90 eastbound if you're traveling in from Castroville. And that arrival from Lytle along I-35 northbound should take you about 16 minutes. But again, this is about 10 miles away from where we have that incident, the closest trans guide camera that we have out there. So we'll find out what's going on there. Hopefully we'll receive an update in the next few minutes, but we will watch the roads closely. And as always, make sure you do the same. Mark. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police say a fight led to a stabbing overnight. Happened just before 10 p.m. in the 700 block of West Mallee Boulevard. That's on the city's south side near Commercial Avenue. Police say two adult men were involved. One of them stabbed the other and took off, so no arrests have been announced yet. The victim was taken to a hospital. We have no word on his condition. A man is in the hospital after being hit by a car while crossing the street on the south side. The crash happened just after 2 p.m. on Sunday near Bonner Avenue and South Florida Street. San Antonio police say the man was not at the crosswalk when he was hit and thrown by a car. He was taken to the hospital. The driver did stop to help and will not be facing any charges. Topping your morning headlines, officials in Philadelphia say the water in the area is not contaminated despite a chemical spill over the weekend. City told residents to use bottled water and many swarm shelves and stores, leaving many completely empty. Coast Guard said in a statement Sunday night it collected 60,000 gallons of contaminated water and there's no report of any wildlife affected by the spill. As Mississippi and Alabama recover from deadly storms that killed at least 26 people this weekend, parts of the Deep South are bracing for more severe weather. Search and recovery crews in places like Rolling Fork, Mississippi, are digging through flattened and battered homes, buildings, and offices. President Joe Biden approved disaster relief for Mississippi on Sunday, including temporary housing, home repairs, and loans covering uninsured property. While Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves is promising to rebuild, some are questioning if it's worth it. I'm looking around town and I'm saying, I know we can rebuild, but what you do with the devastation, what you do with all the, I'm glad I'm by myself. <laughs> Based on early numbers, the National Weather Service is giving the tornado in Rolling Fork, Mississippi, an EF4 rating. That means wind gusts between 166 and 200 miles per hour. Happening today, music fans are ready to see Ticketmaster face the music in federal court, answering a lawsuit over accusations of fraud and price fixing. Taylor Swift fans attended a dance party last night ahead of their four, first court hearing today. ABC's Derek Dennis reports. It's me. This morning, Taylor Swift fans have a big problem with Ticketmaster. A group filing a lawsuit in court today claiming a conspiracy to jack up prices for Swift's Eras Tour. We are not going to just settle. We, we want to see some change happen. We want to see a difference being made. Ticketmaster's parent company, Live Nation, saying earlier this year. We apologize to Ms. Swift. We need to do better and we will do better. But that's not all. I know when that line blink. Drake fans filing a separate lawsuit against Ticketmaster in Canada for alleged price fixing there, claiming the company knew the Canadian artist would perform two concerts in Montreal, but kept that quiet to boost demand. Experts say the underlying problem, Ticketmaster's monopoly on the market, controlling 70% of the industry. The Congress. That was in 1994. Pearl Jam members on Capitol Hill after finding out Ticketmaster added a service charge to its tickets. Many Pearl Jam fans are teenagers who do not have the money to pay $30 or more that it's often charged for tickets today. Pearl Jam complained, tried to get promoters to cap ticket prices at other venues with no luck. There's no one who even comes close to Ticketmaster's strength, its reach, its muscle, its ability to sell the volume of tickets that it has to. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. Now to consumer headlines, parts of Twitter's closely guarded source code were leaked online. That's the fundamental commuter code in which the platform runs, it includes security vulnerabilities. Twitter's filed a suit to determine who was behind the breach. 
More apps are facing government bans this time in France. French officials are banning recreational apps such as TikTok, Twitter, and Candy Crush from public servants' devices. The government says they may represent cybersecurity risk for employees and the administration. Levi's is increasing its modeling staff. The company plans to use AI-generated models to supplement humans used in ads, all part of a digital transformation journey of diversity, diversity, equity, inclusion, and sustainability, according to Levi's. 609, 68 degrees on your Monday. And still to come, a look at some of the stories trending right now on KSET.com, including a strange object flying over Texas. Plus, a tough losing streak for our San Antonio Spurs. Four games on the road after the break, the lowlights from their latest loss to the Celtics. And will we get more rain? That's a question we'll have for Mike later on. Right now we are humid at 68 degrees and kind of misty here and there, depending on where you are in town. We'll be right back. Now to our San Antonio Spurs. Last night they wrapped up their four-game road trip against the Boston Celtics, and they did it without Keldon Johnson and Jeremy Sohan. Silver and Black did their best, but it wasn't enough to hold off the Celtics. Uh, final score from Boston, 137-93. After the game, Pop made one statement, then went back to the locker room. Uh, you know, we, we played well for about a quarter, but after that, I thought we just gave in. You know, last game on the road, end of season, I thought we... Uh, embarrassed ourselves by giving in the way we did, but the Celtics had a lot to do with that. You know, you lose by 40. You know, there's there's probably a lot of things that went wrong, so we got to we got to learn from that because we should never lose a game like that. Next up for our Spurs, they're back in town Wednesday to welcome the Utah Jazz to town. Team leaves again Friday for a game at Golden State. Takes on the Kings in Sacramento as well as the season starts to wind down. Different news and good news for the San Antonio Brahmas. They took on the Arlington Renegades on the road. Brahmas were able to secure a victory Sunday. Final score from Arlington. SA wins 15 to 9. San Antonio Brahmas are now 2 and 4 on the XFL season. Next up, they'll take on the Vipers on Saturday in Las Vegas. Kickoff is set for 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And trending right now on KSET.com, a cat rescued from a steep canal at Woodlawn Lake is now looking for a forever home. According to San Antonio Animal Care Services, she was found earlier this week. We're told the cat named Mystique was trapped on a tiny island full of debris. You can find adoption information on our website. And check this out. A small airborne object was found over south central Texas on Saturday, prompting an investigation from the North American Aerospace Defense Command. They say the object is likely a hobbyist balloon and there is no need to be alarmed. NORAD says they will continue to keep an eye on the object with, along with the FAA. And now NORAD's tracking everything, including kites and balloons. That's right. Just to be safe Just after busy. what we went through in the last month or so. Yeah. 614, 68 degrees. Let's check back with our Stephen Cabasas. <coughs> it's busy, guys. Uh, unfortunately, Monday morning has started off with some issues out on the roadway, so let's get you in the know before you go. 410 at FM 78, not a bad shot there, but you can see maybe just a few droplets there. We've been talking about the mist that's been out on the roadway in some areas of town, so just remember, take your time this morning. Uh, but as I mentioned, there are a few issues. Some of them are here in town, and others are actually as far out as 37 southbound outside uh, of Loop 1604 in the county area. Now, this incident, we're still going to label it as just that, an incident. Unfortunately, uh, it's causing some backups there along 37 southbound as you approach Mathis Road. Transguide is unable to get us a view of the condition out there, so information is very limited at this time, but we can tell you traffic is moving at four miles per hour. Hopefully everyone is OK out there, but I have reached out to the Bear County Sheriff's Office to see if we can get some details about what's going on and how long the scene will actually take place. But let's take a jump back here into town. We do have a stall vehicle right here at State Highway 151 eastbound. Notice that buildup as you approach Old Highway 90. Uh, not a good shot there, and unfortunately it's another area where some of the trans guide cameras don't seem to be able to get us a view of the conditions, but we'll have to watch it closely. Now, some relief out there, guys. We have plenty of green on the screen, so that means we're really not going to see a lot of delays, but watch out because overnight we will continue to see some road repairs along I-10 on the east side of Bear County. Now, this started uh, yesterday night and will take us all the way up until Tuesday, March 28th. Again, uh, it starts at 9 in the evening and should wrap at 5 in the morning. We'll see a full closure of the eastbound lane, main lanes from Graytown Road to File Road. So, plan your commute ahead of time. You can always head over to KSET.com com slash traffic. There is a full list of closures so you can scan the QR code that takes you directly to our page. Another busy morning out on the roadway, guys, but uh, we'll tr we'll track everything close and get everybody through it. 
Thank safely, you, Stephen. Hopefully. Could we hear a rumble of thunder or two in parts of our area later today or tonight? Tonight and mainly off to the east. Uh, we'll, we have a couple of showers around here. As a matter of fact, we've got a, actually a couple of showers showing up on radar right now. It's turned from light mist and drizzle and actually a sprinkle or two. We're going to show you that in just a moment. But 68 degrees this morning, so well above normal. It is humid out there. We're going to make it up to 80 later on today. Plenty of clouds. Then tonight with the front moving on through, that's when we have the chance for a couple of showers, maybe a few rumbles of thunder, but it's going to be very few and far between. First of all, take a look and I know a lot of uh, wildflowers, lawns with some of this off and on rain that we've been having have been benefiting and I love this picture there. That is just beautiful with the mixture of all the different wildflowers. Looks like a little bit of Indian paintbrush in there and some other ones, I don't know the names, but thank you very much for the KSAC Connect shot. All right, out there by the airport, been watching this all morning long. The road appears to be damp, and now, and this was just looking at uh, one or two of the Transguide cameras here in downtown at the interchange with 35 and 10, it was looking like we had a little more in the way of some, uh, some sprinkles. And as you can see here on radar, there's actually a couple of spots, one just right there around uh, SeaWorld, heading over toward Castroville, and then here in and around town, right there by the uh, the medical center. We've got a few more of these uh, little showers that have started to uh, pop up here. This is 10 heading on out. And again, right down here, Jefferson High School, Lee High School, heading in toward the, uh, the medical center. And then further on down, as right around the Pearl, a couple of these. And like I said, this one spot right here in and around the interchange around 10, there was a little bit of this light rain that was showing up. And then a few more of these showers out here to the uh, north and east in 35, 410 area. And that's going to continue to be the situation throughout the rest of this morning with some of these uh, light little uh, sprinkly showers out there. And then a few more further on out to the, uh, the east going out on 10 this morning. So it's just that sort of little nuisance rain, but it's enough to make the roads damp visibility not bad around the metropolitan area a little bit of fog around port sa a lot more around gonzalez very warm temperatures everybody's very consistent look at the difference in dew points though very humid here in the southern half of uh, the area but then up in the hill country drier that dryer is trying to push its way on in here temporarily this morning then it's going to turn around and go back and move on out temporarily. We uh, have jumped up about 20 to 25 degrees as far as the dew points, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere compared to this time yesterday. Here's the computer model throughout the rest of today. And I think we see a little bit of a break in the action. Some sunshine mixed in late this afternoon. Now this evening, we're going to start to see a few of these showers trying to develop around here. Not much then in the overnight hours again, primarily in this model is not as bullish with any rain development. But most of that is off to the east. And again, Storm Prediction Center does have that small chance for one or two of those to be strong to severe well off in our eastern counties late, late tonight, early tomorrow morning. 76 at noon, mostly cloudy skies. So I think we see a couple of peaks of sunshine mixed on in here. 80 high temperature today. We'll still have some humidity around. Then the front moves on through here. It touches off a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms, mainly off to the east. Drier air pulls on in. It's going to be windy tomorrow and kind of a coolish day 70 well below normal 67 only on Wednesday a lot of clouds around here then we start to warm back up humidity tries to return then another sort of dry front moves on through here just in time to kick off the month of April already yes a month for yeah. someone's birthday mm. Mm. <laughs> on April like... first yeah thank you guys no fooling 620 68 degrees Let's look out there with Transguide again looking at, oh, see, you can see the raindrops there on that camera at I-35 at San Marcos. Kind of a busy morning for our Stephen Cavazos. We will be checking back with him again a little later on in the newscast. This is the sound you're breathing. And this is the sound of better breathing. Facenra is a different kind of asthma medication. It's not a steroid or inhaler. Facenra is an add-on treatment for asthma driven by eosinophils. It's one maintenance dose every eight weeks. It helps prevent asthma attacks, improve breathing, and lower use of oral steroids. Nearly seven out of 10 adults with asthma may have elevated eosinophils. Facenra is designed to target and remove them. Facenra is not a rescue medication or for other eosinophilic conditions. Facenra may cause allergic reactions. 
Get help right away if you have swelling of your face, mouth, and tongue, or trouble breathing. Don't stop your asthma treatments unless your doctor tells you to. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection or your asthma worsens. Headache and sore throat may occur. This is the sound of Vicenra. Ask your doctor about Vicenra. In your morning spotlight, an obstacle for the U.S. Army's new ad campaign featuring Jonathan Majors, the Army paused it after the actor was arrested in what New York police termed a domestic dispute. He faces charges of assault, strangulation, and harassment. Majors' attorney says the actor is completely innocent and expects the charges to be dropped soon. Adele is extending her Las Vegas residency. The added shows the Coliseum will run through June 16th through November 4th. Fans can register now for the ticket presale, which begins April 5th. And Harry Potter star Daniel Radcliffe is going to be a dad. He announced he and his longtime partner, Aaron Dark, are expecting their first child. The couple has been together for 10 years. Radcliffe has previously said he would not mind if his future children wanted to be in movies, but says he wants to protect them from fame. Right now we're at 625, 68 degrees. And still ahead at 630, a third of San Antonians are pre-diabetic. We're going to hear from experts at UT Health San Antonio about why some people in the Alamo City are really at risk. Plus, it got scared. I did got scared because you don't know what's going to happen. A person is found dead on a sidewalk on San Antonio's west side. What a neighbor said about a mysterious car parked in front of her home with bullet holes in it. And let's look out there with Transguide. Oh my goodness, Loop 410 at Marbach Road is just stacked up, a big mess out there. We're gonna be checking in with our Steven Cavazos very soon. I don't understand how somebody could do something like this. You know, there's no reason why. This morning on GMSA, three months after a loved one is murdered, a San Antonio family is speaking out and praying for answers. Latest on the case and the reward being offered. Plus two human smuggling cases involving migrants in South Texas over the weekend. And now we're learning the same rail company is involved. And let's look out there with live cam, a little mist here and there and humid, that's for sure, 68 degrees. But we're gonna check in with Mike to see if we're gonna get some more rain later on. Good morning, everybody. 6.30 on your Monday, March 27th. Happy Monday, rise and shine. Let's go ahead and get over to Mike and get the latest on the rain or rainish. Mist drizzle, right. now a couple of showers. When I came into work this morning, it was this very, very fine mist out there, which is the situation in many spots. But now we do have actually a couple of showers that are showing up on radar. And here's the view from our camera down there at Brook City Base. And as you can see, it is a murky start to the Monday morning, and we've got 69 degrees. 2.64, that is up considerably. You get above 60, you feel it. And wind is out of the northeast at 10 miles per hour, trying to pull in a little bit drier air temporarily. More on that in a second. First of all, here's radar right now. And there are a couple of returns, as you can see over here, just right around St. Hedwig, and then sliding up to the kind of northwest over around Windcrest and heading over 35 on the northwest side of town, right there in and around the medical center, and a few over there on the west side, down around 14. 10 on the south side as well. Just a couple of spots. This is what's heavy enough, if you will, to be picked up on radar. Other than that, it's a lot of very light mist and drizzle. We do have some fog out there right around Port SA, as well as Pleasanton, a lot more off to the east. And visibility at Contula, three miles for Carrizo Springs, slight amounts there around Hondo as well as Uvalde. So here's these temperatures, which are fairly consistent right now, but then also we've got it like I said, a little bit of drier air in the hill country. It's trying to slide on in here for the next few hours, late morning hours. Then it's going to be replaced by the humidity. Then that goes away. More on that coming up. Morning mist, a little bit of drizzle, mostly cloudy. 80 for a high temperature today. Now, we have a front moving through later on tonight. So the humidity returns late this afternoon. That front's going to squeeze out a couple of showers and thunderstorms, mainly off to the east. There'll be a few of them here and there, but that's going to be the primary spot for it. Then after a leftover morning shower, it is going to be cooler tomorrow. It's also going to be very windy tomorrow. Rest of the week, 
Cooler still on Wednesday. We start to warm back up. Then another front's going to move through late Friday. There's going to be still a shower here or there uh, Wednesday on Thursday, maybe early Friday. I wouldn't get really excited about those rain chances. However, now back to tonight and overnight, their storm prediction center does have the chance for an isolated, strong, potentially severe storm. Not a great chance, just one or two of them, mainly in our eastern counties. That would be late tonight and in the wee hours tomorrow morning. The weekend, first weekend of April, looking pretty nice. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, I heard you kind of uh, a little angry, angry a couple of moments ago. The fact that there's that mess behind you. Well, you know, Mike, that would make anybody upset, especially yeah. those drivers that are out there. And we have to help them out and get through this mess that's out there at 410 at Marbach. Check this out. River of traffic right now, bumper to bumper. Guys, this is not a good situation. So yeah, that will make anybody upset. But let's first hope everyone is doing okay out there. You see first responders are out there on the scene with several road flares placed in the uh, out there on the road. Uh, at least about three lanes are blocked off from what we're looking at here. And again, not a good situation. So we hope everyone's doing okay. But let's take a look at that mess out there that is building along 410 southbound at Marbach Road. A little bit of a stretch there. It's not too long, but obviously from that shot at Trans Guide, we know it's going to be an issue for commuters. Let's give our first responders plenty of room, pack some patience because they have to take time investigating these crashings and work to clear it up. But unfortunately, not the only issue we are tracking out there this morning. Let's now take a drive not too far, actually. State Highway 151 eastbound before US 90. Earlier, I mentioned that there was a stalled vehicle that was reported uh, at around uh, right around old US 90, but now Texas has updated that to a crash and they've also updated that location again. That is before US 90. You see that stretch along the eastbound lanes of State Highway 151. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to get a shot of that particular stretch of road, but we are watching it closely. Let's now take one last drive over here. The big incident right now on the south side, I 37 southbound at Mathis Road. A pretty serious incident that has been reported causing backups for drivers. Right now, things are moving at just six miles per hour. I have reached out to the Bear County Sheriff's Office. I sent them an email earlier, so let's see if we can get some information. It is a very busy morning out on the roadways. Very frustrating for a lot of these drivers, but again, let's hope everyone's doing okay out there. We're going to track this situation closely. Again, make sure you have your KSAT mobile app downloaded with those notifications turned on because we send push alerts and that lets you know what's happening out on the roadways before you have to hit the door. Guys. Here's the story we've been tracking all morning with the help of Steven and Transguide cameras. Three men in the hospital this morning follow a head-on crash involving a wrong way driver. It happened around 2.30 this morning on I-10 in the westbound lanes on the lower level near Culebra Road. San Antonio police say three men were taken to a hospital, one in serious condition. SAPD did not say why the crash occurred. It's unclear if any charges could be filed. New details this morning on two human smuggling cases in South Texas in just two days. The latest one happening in Eagle Pass. Now 12 people were found trapped inside a rail car and one of those migrants is dead. The migrants were found Saturday afternoon when Eagle Pass fire and Maverick County Sheriff's deputies were called to the Union Pacific train yard. Officials say one of the migrants inside the rail car had called 911 saying they were trapped inside for over 24 hours. Three migrants were taken to a nearby hospital and eight others were detained by Border Patrol. This is the second migrant investigation involving a Union Pacific rail car. On Friday, 17 migrants were found near Canipa Homeland. Security investigators are looking into both cases. This morning, San Antonio police are still looking for a suspect on the run. That's after the person was, a fa was found dead on a sidewalk on the city's west side. When San Antonio police arrived late Saturday night, they found a car parked on the street, still running with bullet holes on the passenger side. That car was parked right in front of Rosalinda Doria's home. I got scared. I did got scared because you don't know what's going to happen. As we said right now, San Antonio police are still looking for a suspect. The name of the victim has not been released. A family is searching for answers over three months after their loved one was killed. San Antonio police say 27-year-old Rain Rice was in a car on December 17th around 7.45 p.m. on I-10 West before the upper and lower level split near downtown when someone shot her. So these are photos of the suspect's vehicle. The dark SUV was driving west on Cesar Chavez Boulevard at South Florida Street behind a white Hummer limo before the shooting. Now her family is asking for whoever did this to think of her children and give them the closure they deserve.
they can imagine what it would feel like to them. You know, uh, if you had a sister, you had a, a daughter and somebody came and took them away, how would you feel about it? So mm -hmm. do the right thing and come forward. Rice's family says there's a $5,000 reward for information on her murder. If you know anything, you're asked to give Crime Stoppers a call. You can remain anonymous. Happening now, an Amber Alert from Saturday has been changed to an endangered missing child alert. The alert is for a six-year-old boy who vanished up in North Texas. Noel Rodriguez Alvarez described as having physical and developmental challenges. Everman police say his mother is not cooperating with their investigation. Police also learned she left the country with her husband and six children, but Noah was not named a pa as a passenger on the flight. While police are looking for Noel, they've charged his mother with making a false report of a missing child or person. Anyone with information is asked to call Everman Police at the number on the bottom of your screen. Well, looking at tomorrow is Diabetes Alert Day. Health experts believe it could serve as one day wake up call for a, the seriousness of that disease. And here at home, one in six people here in San Antonio has type two diabetes and a third are pre-diabetic. Max Massey sat down with UT Health San Antonio to talk about the difference between type one and type two diabetes and how it affects you. Yes, the doctor joined us. We talked about a lot. We talked about the risks, the symptoms, and we also talked about the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Specifically, we talked about the issues that pertain specifically to our community here in San Antonio. Take a listen to part of our conversation. So in minorities, in Hispanics, African Americans, of course in San Antonio, about 60% of the population is Hispanic. So all of us, uh, you know, most of us are at risk. Uh, if you have history of being overweight or obese, and about 70% of Americans are overweight and about 50% of Americans are obese. So most of us are at risk. Uh, if you have a brother, a sister, a father, a mother with type two diabetes, if you're not active, you're sedentary, you exercise, less than a couple of times a week. You can check out the full conversation right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. We have Leading SA every Sunday at 8 a.m. So guys, we'll see you next Sunday. 639, 68 degrees. Coming up next, as we wrap up Women's History Month, we are shining a spotlight on legendary Olympian Allison Felix, why she's making history off the track as an advocate for maternal health care. 642 this morning, the most decorated track and field Olympian in U.S. history is getting a field named after her. Allison Felix will go down in history, not just for her athletic ability, but also her advocacy on maternal health care. ABC's Melissa Don spoke with the track star about changes she's brought to the sport and what else she wants to accomplish. I had a lot of people who poured into me, you know, obviously who paved the way. Olympic champion Allison Felix is no stranger to a track, but this one is extra special. The University of Southern California, her alma mater, naming it after her. I feel really proud and I'm so excited to bring my daughter here and to tell her all about my time here and just the lessons that I've learned. It's in those lessons that would define Allison Felix and make her an inspiration. The 37 year old is the most decorated U.S. track and field athlete in Olympic history. At 19, she won her first world championship title. In 2012, she went on to win three Olympic gold medals. Her track accomplishments were nonstop until a life moment changed everything. I was terrified when I decided to speak out. In 2018, Allison would become a mom. Not done competing, she had her sights set on the 2020 Olympics. But before the games and after giving birth, Allison penned a New York Times op-ed in which she shared how Nike wanted to pay her 70% less than before she was pregnant. And there was no guarantee she could keep her sponsored through her pregnancy. So she dropped Nike, entering the 2020 Olympics without a sponsor. Instead, creating her own shoe line called Seish. The thing I'm most proud of, of all of my accomplishments, is contributing to change around the maternal protection policy. And now that athletes at Nike are given 18 months of maternal protection, and I feel like just trying to make things easier for women who want to do both. Allison wearing her own shoes would then reign, surpassing Carl Lewis for the most Olympic medals in U.S. track and field history finishing with 18 career medals. I came back and I felt like I had such a bigger reason to be there and to compete. And it started to become much more about um, other things than just, you know, winning and medals and all of those, but the lessons that I could show my daughter. Melissa Don, ABC News, Los Angeles. 
a huge parking lot has formed at Loop 410 in Marbach. Let's check back with Steven. Yeah, this is definitely something people do not want to see as they are getting their morning started and maybe have to drive out there in the area. Uh, yeah, things are not looking any better. In fact, Steph even mentioned during the break, it's getting a little bit worse now that uh, we are getting we are now at the start of morning rush. This is back to back traffic out there, guys. It is not a good situation. I always like to mention, I hope everyone is doing OK in terms of the incident that's being reported here, but we know it's a crash and this is also going to cause issues for drivers in the southbound lanes of Marbach Road or pardon me 410 as you approach Marbach Road. That buildup has uh, stayed pretty consistent, but now that we are at the start of morning rush, we can expect to see that stretch just a little bit more. Not too far from there, there's another incident that was reported a crash along State Highway 151 eastbound just before US 90. Still have that stretch that's building along those lanes, but um, I don't think we're going to be able to get a shot of the conditions out there. I've been trying to comb through some of the cameras from Transguide and I'm not seeing any flashing lights, but that doesn't mean that they're not there. But we does look like we have better news to report here. This incident along 37 southbound at Mathis Road seems to be clearing up. Earlier traffic was moving at just four miles per hour. Now check it out, 71 miles per hour. So that is a good indication that it may have cleared out. Again, I reached out to the Bear County Sheriff's Office uh, through email to find out if they can give us some details. Still waiting to hear back, but once we get that information, of course, we will let you know on KSAT.com. Giving you a wide look at the metropolitan area here, guys. It is another busy start on our roadways. We did mention we had that crash also along I-10 earlier, the westbound lanes head on collision, as you guys mentioned, a uh, wrong way driver. So it, the morning has been off to a very terrible start for any commuters this morning. So just remember to drive safe. Give first responders plenty of room. Yes, sir. Thank mm -hmm. you, Stephen. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Yuck. Super packed out mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Hopefully this brightens your day just a little yeah. bit. Take a look at this picture, which is absolutely gorgeous out there. Oh, yeah. Aww. Yeah, from I over the weekend. The blue bonnets feel a lot better. Good. That's good, Stephen. <laughs> and the Indian paintbrush. What a fantastic picture. Thank you very much for that one. All right. This is not the prettiest picture. This is from our uh, camera down there at Brook City Base, looking up toward the skyline, and you really can't make out too much of it. Just a couple of lights over here on the uh, on the dome and the Tower of the Americas and some of the buildings downtown. And as far as radar, we don't really have a heck of a lot showing up on radar as of right now. There are a few of these little sprinkles. As you can see, you've really got to kind of squint to see them. There's a couple of them. This is what's being picked up. Most of it is too light to uh, to show up on radar right down here around 410 uh, on the south side. A couple of them on the uh, northeast side of town over there by shirts. A few more of these showers and then a couple of more down here right around Lavernia heading in towards St. Hedwig and elsewhere out in the to the northwest. That's pretty much about it. Maybe one or two around Castroville. So again, that's about it that's showing up on radar right now. It's just all this moisture being pumped on in here and five visibility at Port SA, but then Randolph, the airport and further up to the north and, and uh, northeast, everything is fine. What's going on? We've got temperatures which are fairly consistent, a little cooler up to the north, but then some drier air is here in the northern portion of our area. And then we got a lot of humidity down to the south. That drier is going to try to edge its way down to the south, but it's not going to do a very good job of it. Maybe kind of coming on in here in the next few hours, but then it's going to get kind of shoved back out of the way. So we'll got the chance for a couple little sprinkles out there this morning mid 70s at noon, some sunshine today, limited, not as much as uh, the past couple of days, and then 80 for a high temperature. Now, another chance of rain starts to work its way back in here later on this evening. Here's computer model. This one's not as bullish as far as the rain is concerned. We do get some breaks in the clouds, though, later on this afternoon. A few showers are trying to pop up here and there this evening, and a couple of them in the wee hours tomorrow morning, and then a few thunderstorms well off there to the east, and that's where the majority of any thing is going to be. We will start off pretty dry tomorrow, but we'll start to see a few more of these showers trying to develop as time rolls on into late tomorrow and then overnight into Wednesday and the Storm Prediction Center again. Eastern counties has that small chance for one of those to be uh, strong to potentially severe with high winds and hail, but those are going to be very few and far between more further off to the east over by Houston and east of there. Uh, 76 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature today makes it up to 80. Again, mostly cloudy, limited sunshine, still humid. Now the front's going to move through late tonight. It will touch off one or two of those showers, thunderstorm, mainly off to the east. It is going to pull in drier air and it's going to be windy tomorrow. Cooler as well, 70, 67 on Wednesday. 
well below normal temperatures. It won't get as cool in the morning thanks to the cloud cover around here. And then we start to build back up 82 on Friday. A couple of showers here and there, 20% chance. Really Wednesday, Thursday, early Friday, not a great chance. And then the next front is not going to be cool, but it will be dry. So looks very nice for the weekend. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll take that, uh, especially that 67 there. That looks kind of nice. Yeah, yeah, that will be nice on Wednesday. Good break. Thank mm -hmm. you, Mike. 650, 67 degrees. And let's look out there with a live cam. Uh, 67, not too bad, like Mark said. Uh, but we do have some spots of drizzle and mist in some areas, so just watch out out there. We'll be right back. Coming up here on GMA, the latest from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, and all of the south, where 27 reported tornadoes ripped through five states. We've got teams all over from Georgia back here to Mississippi, the latest on the dozens dead and the threat yet today. A lot of tornadoes and more where that came from by the end of the week. I'll be tracking the forecast. On top of that, the American couple missing in Haiti reportedly kidnapped and being held for ransom. We're going to hear from their family and an exclusive with Whitney Houston's family on her new gospel album that they released. That and the singer's legacy. You don't want to miss any of it coming up right here on GMA. Also looking ahead, San Antonio Book Festival is coming up in three weeks. So the United Way SA will be accepting book donations from now until April 20th. So San Antonio personalities, athletes, and community leaders are teaming up with the United Way of San Antonio and Bear County for this year's Read United. There will be a book drive to help share the importance of literacy with other children in our community. Books can be purchased through the United Way's Amazon gift list, and you can find that by scanning this QR code on your screen. And Fiesta is right around the corner. KSAT kicking it off with a KSAT Insider Contest. KSAT Insiders now have a chance to be a royal for a day. This will give you the opportunity to ride in the parade with their own court and get some extra prizes. We have all that information on your screen right now. Head over to KSAT.com for more information. That sounds fun, but yeah. not so fun. The roadways this morning. Let's check back with Steven to see if there's any improvement. Well, check this out. Completely different shot, guys, here at 410 at Marbach. It does look like uh, that crash that we reported earlier has already cleared out, so you are in the clear here. Better news there at 410 southbound, but it does look like we still have a little bit of traffic that's building up there. We'll confirm that through our friends at Transguide to see if that's already cleared out, but uh, take your time this morning. Plenty of issues out on the roadway. You can see as we take you over here, new issues are popping up. State Highway 16 at Zazamoto looks like as you're going north, you're going to encounter a crash that's causing a little bit of a slowdown there. No transguide cameras in the area, but I'll watch it closely. Can't let you go without mentioning this issue along Loop 410 eastbound as you get onto that I-35 interchange. Another crash reported out there. Busy morning for our drivers and our first responders. Uh, pack your patience this morning. It has been a very chaotic morning out on the roadways. Hoping everyone's doing okay, but we'll track everything, Mike. Do have a little bit of fog, a little bit of uh, mist drizzle, some sprinkles out there, as you can see can't see too much of the uh, skyline and there's those few little spots that are showing up on rain other than that again it's just light mist and drizzle some fog around especially down along the coastal plain it is very warm it is very humid we're going to make it up to 80 later on this afternoon that sounds good at least the weekend sounds good as well <laughs> and the weekend's going to be fantastic yes thanks for joining us today have a good day good morning america is next